so thank you to to be connected uh, with us today on the on the second uh, second part of the of the kibotics webinar um, so just to, to to put the the general context uh, of the project um, to present the general this general context uh, kibotics uh, is a project co-founded by the eit manufacturing um, that uh, and the european union um, that deals uh, with uh, collaborative robots um, for complex surface finishing uh, operations so we want to um, displace the the workload uh, from uh, the operator to the collaborative robotics uh, the objective is to improve uh, the working conditions in terms of safety ergonomics and productivity um, and to gain a more stable uh, a process uh, in terms of quality uh, and uh, and so on and uh, yes to use cobots uh, for this purpose um, and the specific task that will be aimed for this project is are the complex surface finishing operations on parts uh, that have complex shapes and complex surface states so this project um, um, regroups uh, different actors so we have the solution makers uh, and the business owner who are the SEWA and EasyBot, EasyBot being the, the business owner in this, in this project. We also have the end users. So we have Lisi Aerospace, an aeronautical uh, company in France, uh, which makes uh, stru structural parts either in aluminum or titanium. Vostalpin, um, which is a, a metallurgical company from Austria. And we have also integrators such as Amatec in Austria and uh, Aerospace Valley, which acts as uh, the project coordinator of this project. Uh, Aerospace Valley being a um, competitive cluster located here uh, in France. So we had a first uh, webinar on the 13th of September. This, the aim of this first webinar was to introduce really the, 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 the context of uh, the Kibotics project in terms of um, how to define a cobotic project um, and also detail the normative boundaries that can exist and also uh, start to, to, to give an example of the approach, the methodology to design and to deploy a cobotic project. And you can find the, 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 the replay of this um, webinar on, on the YouTube account of Aerospace Valley. And today we will uh, proceed to the second part uh, of the, the Kibotics webinar uh, with a strong focus on the industrial use cases. Today, the, the, the objective will really be to, uh, to take some time to discuss industrial case studies and uh, also have testimonies of, uh, of the actors that are dealing with this Kibotic project uh, firsthand, so Vestalpin and Lise Aerospace. So today, uh, the structure of the webinar will be the following. First, we will leave the floor to uh, Philippe van de Sampel in, uh, from EasyBot, who will detail uh, a, a specific use case, uh, sorry, a case study uh, in the industry, and will go further in detail about uh, how they, um, what are the constants, the problematic uh, during the deployment of, uh, of a cobotic project. Then we will have testimonies from our industrial partners, so Tilan Maruzic from uh, Vestalpin and uh, Nicola Pomier from Lizzy Aerospace. And we will conclude with a, an open talk about the perspectives um, of the cobot use in, uh, in, in production. So uh, we'll take some time to, uh, to introduce the, the experts and the speakers for today. So we have Philippe Van de Sompel from EasyBoat partner and chief uh, operating officer in EasyBoat. He will, uh, he will uh, be in charge of the first part. And then we have Nicolas Pommier, uh, industrialization engineer uh, in the structural parts department at Lizzie Aerospace. And Tilen Maruzic uh, from, uh, from Vestalpin, robotic expert and also um, a member of the digital solution department in uh, Vestalpin uh, high performance metals 
Austria. And uh, I don't forget uh, people who also contributed to this presentation and uh, uh, also during the project. So we have Catherine Bedard and Max Da Silva Simoes, respectively from Seva and Easyboat, who were there for the, the first webinar, and also uh, Sel Magshir from Seva, uh, which uh, has a very active role in this project and the realization of the uh, of the achievement of, of this project. So now I will leave the floor to uh, Philippe van der Sompel, who will um, who will uh, go further in details about um, the use cases, the a case study uh, that Easyboat uh, has met. So Philippe, I will uh, leave the floor to you just a few minutes so that I can shift the screens. Okay. Yes. Yes, Philippe, can you, uh, I can't hear you. Maybe your microphone is, is shut. Can you activate your microphone, Philippe? I will. Yes, that's okay. Uh, do, you, do, you see, do you see my screen? Yes, uh, we see it very well. Okay. So I yes. Put full screen. Okay. Yes. Hello everybody, I'm Philippe Van Sompel uh, from EasyBoat and I want to uh, show you uh, one use case developed by Airbus and after the different uh, topics to uh, take in account when you uh, approach uh, a cobotic uh, project. Uh, to go directly on the subject, uh, we speak about a, a project developed uh, with Airbus and now we have two robots in production in Toulouse. Um, just after the last painting of the uh, aircraft, we need to have a complete sanding of uh, the aircraft in order to have the same aspect before painting. And this uh, task is managed by uh, uh, two uh, 12 people in two shifts in order to, uh, to send the complete uh, surfaces. Uh, as you see uh, at the le uh, top left, the operation before, uh, very often the main uh, uh, work with uh, a large sending machine and uh, for all part uh, close to the floor people work with uh, arm uh, over the, their shoulders and it's very painful task. The purpose is to uh, replace uh, or assist uh, workers for the underbody of the aircraft and uh, in this project we uh, the cobot, uh, we have two cobots uh, under the, on the aircraft to uh, manage 75 meters, square meters of surfaces, but probably is the surfaces the most difficult uh, to send for the workers. After uh, several tests and now in production, and the feedback that we have today, and we will see probably moving the, the robot now, I'm not sure that the flow of, of the video is it's okay, but you have a, a smooth movement of the of the robots, and uh, by this way we can treat the complete surfaces. Um, the, the the workers manage the the cobot to deplace the cobot under the the aircraft, and the, the surfaces by uh, by point is uh, 1.5 square meters. And, uh, and uh, by moving the robot in all the surfaces, we can uh, complete uh, the sending operation. The result of that is uh, first uh, in the quality issues, uh, we have uh, any uh, problem of quality issues with the cobot, this is a good thing. Very often in manual operation, we have some uh, uh, default of uh, orientation of uh, sending machine and by this way you have some issues uh, uh, for the final aspect and the second point is that we have uh, optimized the consumable of uh, uh, for this task uh, by increasing the life cycle time of the abrasive disc by 50 percent 
and uh, this is due by a uh, gradation of uh, force control on the on the disc managed by the uh, cobot and this is good because uh, um, the volume of consumption of uh, abrasive disc is important but uh, the main point of this application in uh, the two shift we make the complete uh, aircraft in manual operation and with the cobot only by working on 75 square meters we save three hours for 18 people and uh, it's a very good result and uh, the first operation has been made for the A350 and now uh, Airbus placed an order for the A320. This is for the example. Why we have this kind of uh, result is due to the fact uh, EasyBot use a concept developed in CEA, CEA sorry, and it's a ball screw and cabling actuators and uh, this uh, actuators is uh, more efficient as we can find on the robotic industrial robot uh, on the market in uh, cobot also and uh, the, the actuator produce a uh, low inertia is good for the safety uh, with uh, workers and good transparency is good for the quality of programming of the robots the second point is uh, the way to work with uh, robots in fact, today the two robots is managed by the same team in Airbus, and uh, we don't need to have a specific training, and we don't need to have a specific uh, uh, service engineers uh, with uh, gradation of robotics to, with, uh, to work with. And the last one is a process uh, uh, advantage. The fact that the all robot is uh, like a sensor, we have a uh, a best result concerning the force control and the fact to be uh, on place of the surfaces for the disc. This three advantage gives the, the, the fact that this kind of uh, installation is, uh, is on the top that we can find on the market uh, today uh, for descending operations. Just a, a quick uh, video to see how to program the robot. You have two possibilities. The first is to uh, record a manual pass uh, uh, of the robot, as the men make today. And you will see that when we change the orientation of the head, uh, the force control follow uh, uh, the positionment of the disc. And after the machine restitute the past trajectory and we can change all parameters uh, linked to the to the processes uh, separately that the past programming it's a good uh, things when uh, you have to change uh, the the grid of the paper it's uh, important to do that the second way to work with a robot is to select the three the four corners of the surfaces and when you indicate the four corners all the surfaces between the the, the four uh, points is uh, performed uh, uh, by the robot in this case you have a, a polishing application sorry uh, what is important to uh, to to see when you are address uh, a project is uh, to see where we can save money and where we can save uh, painful for uh, for the um, for the for the workers, and how we can increase the agility uh, for the company to treat uh, the different uh, requirements of their customers. Very often we we start for the MSD issues. Typically, uh, companies come to us because they have some difficulty to uh, hire people because. Uh, Young people don't want to, to work in the job where we have the risk to have uh, damage after uh, a couple of years of uh, job. And secondly, uh, very often there are already some people in restriction of activity due to the same uh, painful task in the past. This is, uh, is, a very, uh, uh, of, is very often that you have this uh, kind of situation as an um, input uh, for the discussion. After that, we have to uh, consider the pollution flow to see uh, which kind of uh, part uh, we treat, uh, which kind of uh, capacity uh, of pollution we need. Typically, we are not very adapted for the automotive industries. When you produce uh, 1,500 parts per day, very often you can split all the operation in simple operation and managed by uh, industrial robot cells. In our case, very often we are linked to the transportation uh, activities like uh, train, uh, 
uh, aeronautics, uh, marines, uh, pleasure boat, and so on. At the end, the, the fact to, uh, to have a, um, a diversity on, on the productions uh, and the fact to have a, a simple part to repair, especially when you uh, address the maintenance operation uh, that we call uh, MAO. Uh, very often, the, the robot is uh, uh, the, ro the, the cobalt is in, interesting because the short uh, programming to uh, to perform a surface uh, compared to the process is a, a good ratio uh, in order to introduce uh, uh, cobaltic. In all the cases, when you have uh, some input like that, we discuss with the customers about their uh, uh, their wish uh, concerning the first real, and we manage to organize a session of two days in site with one robot, one EasyBot engineers, and the staff in charge of the manual operation in order to see three things. First, process control and quality control. This is the main, uh, main topics. Secondly, the acceptability for the workers to work with the robot. Don't forget the fact that the cobot is not online in the production line. The cobot can, uh, can be bypassed by the, uh, by the workers very easily. And we don't want to have a machine in the corner of the workshop with the dust, uh, uh, with the dust uh, on, on, the, on the covers because uh, it's not adapted to, uh, to the workers. It's for that, that this kind of test is managed with uh, with the workers in order to see uh, the, the feedback of the workers. In general, the feedback is good. And the last point is to, uh, uh, to, uh, to analyze the risk analysis um, uh, linked to the situations. This is really important because uh, even if uh, the machine is uh, uh, safe, we can uh, uh, put the machine in the uh, environment that will have some risk for the workers. Um, I put some pictures in order to uh, to see uh, some uh, some uh, some demo, from, some uh, sample of our application. In training buses, uh, now we have a lot of robots installed in uh, uh, MRO operations. Sometimes it is a, a part of a train, like uh, the picture on the top of the left. Sometimes it's a robot install of the existing nacelles with workers to make the roof of the train. And you have also the robot who uh, managed to send the, the side of the car body of the train. Train is a very uh, good axe of uh, development for us. And we are working now with a foreign uh, supplier of train or railway company. Yachting at shipyard is uh, another case. Uh, for yachting, you have a lot of pressure boats with composite parts. And is an activity we need a lot of uh, sending operation. And now more and more, this kind of uh, um, activities need to uh, reflect about the future of uh, of the staff. And uh, we signed uh, recently a contract with Benito, one of the leaders of the uh, laser boat, in order to uh, install two first robots and to see how uh, implement in the in the 15 plant the different kind of application with robots. In marine also for the, for, uh, oops, I have some issues, I lost my screen, sorry. Uh, for the marine and uh, shipyard, uh, you have some application in uh, breathing application in order to uh, resolve some uh, uh, painting corrosion on the metal sheet before welding or to uh, smooth metal sheet in order to, uh, to have a regular uh, a smooth uh, array indicators on the um, on, on the metal sheets. In aeronautics, we work. Uh, we are working for a new uh, aircraft uh, as uh, Airbus, but also for MRO in order to uh, to repair internal or external part of the aircraft uh, for the uh, for the refurbishment of uh, medium refurbishment uh, of the aircraft after ten or twelve years of uh, of uh, exploitation. Sorry. This is our reference, uh, train uh, aeronautics. We are starting to work now in Germany. And we have an uh, application also in TV works. Now we, uh, we're starting to work with a uh, company who has some, uh, uh, some needs uh, for different applications. And Cobot is uh, uh, 
uh, a good possibility for them to uh, to secure their resources, human resources on field. That's all the, for me for the, this first step of uh, discussions. And uh, the, the fact to work with robots, uh, interactive robots, without paid full for, uh, for the workers, open some uh, opportunities to enlarge uh, the, the people who can work with, uh, with a machine. That's all for me for this time. Have you a question? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Philippe. And uh, thank you to have uh, opened this uh, second webinar to, to be the first to, to present the uh, this, uh, these aspects um, and thank you very much for the, the, the first case study uh, about the, this Airbus uh, surface finishing and painting example um, because uh, we see here the, uh, the different aspects, uh, the constant we have in the industry that justify the cobot use. Uh, it's a work which is done a bit in height. We have the problematic of the load. Uh, we see that the, the the sense of the effort to to to, to produce is um, it's upwards. So we can imagine the, the difficulty for both the operator to do the task and also keep a constant um, quality. And uh, it was well detailed uh, afterwards uh, the different uh, feature of the cobot uh, that can help to lift. Uh, these issues of both uh, quality and ergonomics so thank you very much um, and uh, yes to the attendees uh, if you have uh, questions you can start to prepare them and at the end uh, uh, do not hesitate to, to to forward them to me so they can we can have a, an open discussion uh, at the end of the webinar so yes thank you very much philippe for for, for the opening and this case study and uh, yes now we will we will start the second part of the webinar with really the testimonies of our industrial end users. Now that we've seen the potential of a cobalt use and what can be done in production, uh, let's uh, let's give the place to our uh, industrial uh, experts um, to detail us uh, in, in 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 which way the the cobotics are interesting for them in, for their strategy and also uh, what they expect from the Kibotics project. So uh, I suggest to start with um, uh, Tilen. Uh, I will give the, the screen to you, so we'll take a, a, a bit of time so they can shift the screen to you. Okay, yes, so Tilen, we see your screen very well. Uh, can you hear me also? Yes, yes we oh. hear you very well. So now the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Laila. Um, yeah, uh, welcome everyone to the Keybotics live webinar session two. Uh, my name is Tilian Morusic and I work uh, at uh, Vistalpina High Performance Metals Digital Solutions uh, as a robotic expert, uh, where I support our companies in implementing uh, or also developing robotic solutions for our uh, requirements. Uh, so in today's presentation, I will give a brief overview of uh, Vistalpine and our company Digital Solutions. Um, then I will briefly touch uh, the challenges and the needs, um, our challenges and needs uh, when integrating robotic solutions. Uh, how are we addressing these challenges uh, and also needs using the cobots um, and also shortly present what Keybotics is uh, and of course our role in the project uh, and what does the Keybotics mean for us. So without further ado, uh, I will dig uh, in the, into the presentation starting with the uh, Vestalpine. So Vestalpine is um, leading steel and technology group um, with uh, combined material and processing expertise. Uh, it focuses on uh, product as well as system solutions based uh, on steel and other metals in some of the technology uh, intensive industries and niches. The Vistalpina group uh, has four divisions, but today I will just talk about one. This is high performance metals division or HPM division. Uh, where also I work and where also the digital solution is located. 
the HPM division is uh, divided in uh, eight production sites and uh, around um, 140 or more than 140 value added services uh, around the globe. Um, the main um, product, uh, so to say, uh, from HPM division are different uh, uh, steel, steel, uh, steels from tool steel, uh, high-speed steel, valve steel, um, all the way to um, special uh, engineering steels, uh, nickel-based uh, uh, and titanium alloys, as well as uh, steels, uh, which are produced using powder metallurgy, uh, and also powder for the additive manufacturing processes. Um, if I say some words about digital solutions, so <clears throat> digital solutions, acts internally as um, the solution uh, as a development partner and also a solution provider uh, we focus on uh, six different areas um, and these are the first one is data science and uh, ai where we support our companies from uh, different use cases in this field uh, then it is uh, industrial IoT and automation, focusing on the transparency on the shop floor and connectivity, machine connectivity. The third one is robotics, um, mainly um, uh, developing a robotic solution in the first phases of the, uh, of the robotic project uh, or automation project, um, including uh, generating layout and um, simulation models and also supporting uh, at integration uh, of robotic solutions. The fourth one is sensor technology, uh, where we focus mainly on um, uh, dimensional measurement and also inspection and quality detection. And the fifth and the sixth um, um, areas are basically digital consulting, um, helping and supporting in digital transformation. And on the other hand is Digital Academy, where we have two programs, um, Digital Ambassador Qualification Program, um, and um, data science and AI training program. So um, if I focus a little bit on the uh, challenges and needs that we uh, have when implementing a robotic solution. Um, so if I, start, if I start with challenges, um, we, we are in the steel industry. So um, a high weight of parts is one of our challenges or maybe better if I say, uh, wide span or wide range of, uh, of uh, uh, weight. Uh, so we can have products uh, or parts which are less than one kg up to a couple of tons uh, of weight. Uh, we have wide, also wide uh, variety of geometry parts. Uh, so we have also forged parts and uh, some of the forged parts have really complex um, surface geometry. Um, the Next challenge uh, is high temperature also uh, and complex processes. Uh, for example, if we uh, say some words about polishing, we don't polish just flat surfaces, but um, we also have to polish some um, um, complex geometry surfaces, um, intricate, intricate surfaces, uh, which uh, require um, a human expert. Um, uh, and, and uh, human expertise and also um, experiences. Uh, and of course, the global trend of high mix and low volume uh, is also a challenge. And of course, all these challenges uh, are interconnected. So this means that uh, simply we can have high temperature and high weight, uh, or we have complex processes with high mix um, of uh, um, or high uh, variety of parts. Um, on the other hand, if we look on the needs. Um, so these needs are somehow also mirrored uh, challenges. Um, one of the needs are we often require a wide range on the payload capacity of the robot. Um, we require also a speed of the, uh, of the process uh, if we, or this robotic solution. Uh, not all the time, but often it's also that required that the, the process is uh, quick or at least quicker than uh, than the the, the manual uh, the manual one. We need uh, accuracy. Uh, if I stick at polishing, for example, um, the, the 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 operation has to be accurate, but also it needs to be repetitive. Um, uh, so the the the, the process needs uh, has to be uh, re repeatable. 
Um, dexterity also, uh, so to say, dexterity uh, is uh, something that we also uh, need. Uh, then process flexibility um, uh, and reconfigurability, so producing one uh, one part and producing next part, uh, uh, so this reconfigurability of the cell is also quite important. Um, and of course, at the end, um, it has to withstand the environment. It has to be uh, environmental uh, resi environment resilient. Uh, and here also, uh, our needs are uh, interconnected. Uh, so we may have, uh, I don't know, high, high payload, um, and we need flexibility um, or speed and reconfigurability. Uh, so this is some something really important. Um, good. Yeah, and now how do we um, addressing these challenges uh, and needs using uh, cobots? Um, well, the, um, we are in the industry which is uh, traditionally more meant for industrial robots uh, or even a special manipulators handling really um, high payloads or heavy duty robots. Um, than cobots. However, um, we are in, in in some cases we are also uh, trying to move away uh, from this paradigm um, and uh, also try using other technologies as, uh, for example, cobot technologies. Um, and why we would like to do this uh, is simply because in uh, the cobots uh, have. Uh, Evolved or have been evolving uh, rapidly in, in in the in the past few years, uh, from hardware perspective as well as from software perspective. Uh, from hardware, uh, the the whole mechanical structure is is better, and the software uh, improvement uh, are reflected in the ease of use or uh, lead through programming or uh, or basically no, uh, uh, we don't need an expert to to program the, the cobot. Uh, the second one is that uh, the cobot um, can be more flexible as industrial um, robots. Uh, this simply means that can be also quickly reconfigurable uh, and redeployable, um, especially redeployable if, um, let's say, we are using some sort of a mobile platforms uh, or even AGVs. Um, for the listeners that they don't know what AGV is, this is basically an automated guided vehicle or also automated uh, mobile robot, which um, can autonomously autonomously move uh, in, in, in space, uh, let's say in the production hall, and uh, if the cobot is uh, on the uh, AGV, uh, it also basically extends the, the usability of both cobot and AGV uh, drastically. Uh, and cobots also are uh, focusing, uh, at least what we see, more on the end of arm tooling, uh, so more on the robot tool, more on the end effector. Uh, so in this sense, also the 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 tools are getting a little bit more um, smarter, if if I can say it like that. Um, so yeah, and this leads me to basically to the Keybotics project um, where we are uh, also participating. Um, as a use case, use case provider, one of our production uh, facilities, this, this is Wüsselpine uh, Bühler Bleche in Austria, is offering um, uh, use case. So our role is to be a use case provider, uh, uh, an end user, and also a solution validator at the end. Um, the process operation or the use case is basically um, quite simple. We have some, um, uh, some flat parts, uh, square parts, uh, and um, the edges needs to be deburred. Uh, and basically this, this burr is really small, so we can say that this is a fine deburring. Um, after the laser cutting operation, uh, as mentioned, the parts are not that big, um, and also they weigh less than half of uh, a kilogram. Uh, and currently, we use basically flat uh, flat files and rotary grinders uh, to remove the burrs around. Um, and um, the tasks are yeah mainly handling and deburring. Uh, so it doesn't the, the part doesn't weigh that much, or it, it's not like a big uh, uh, in dimensions. But there are uh, uh, highly repetitive tasks and this is the grinding the operator or the worker has to um, 
moved apart a uh, lot of times to, to reach all the, the, the edges and to, to deburr them. Uh, so they are highly repetitive and I can also say tedious uh, tasks to do. Um, yeah, and basically on in my last slide, uh, what I would like to show is what does the keybotics mean for us. Um, basically, we uh, we have two. Uh, it it has two impacts. One is the direct impact, which is the proje project focused, and then the indirect impact. Uh, the the first one are basically um, we um, we evaluate the possible solutions for the requirements that we uh, that we provided. Uh, the project consortium develops uh, then a, a solution for for this given uh, use case. We can uh, test, or we have been testing. We have been adopting. We can improving the solution to meet the requirements. And um, also, what is imp important is that we think of delegating this tedious and repetitive tasks to um, uh, from the worker to the cobot uh, and resulting in a uh, improved well-being of the worker uh, but also on the other hand important uh, improved process uh, quality uh, stability uh, and also productivity and uh, indirect impacts basically is that we get an insight in collaborative robotics from the industry use cases as we have seen uh, uh, in, in the previous presentation. Um, then we get a technical feasibility of EasyBot collaborative robot. Um, we can evaluate the potential new use cases um, after the a successful uh, demonstrator of the keybotics. Uh, and we can also think of um, improving basically or or yeah uh, think of the, the second phase of the of the keybotics um, uh, in, in in the future. So this is um, basically all in all from uh, from my side, uh, short and quick. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, I will gladly answer you. Uh, and uh, otherwise, yeah, thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you very much, Tilan. Um, and you're right to mention the questions for the attendees. Uh, if you can, if you want to forward them, uh, I will uh, I will uh, summarize them and uh, and we will have an open talk at, at the end of the webinar. Uh, thank you, Tilen. Uh, I think we had a very good outlook on how Cobotics can help uh, beyond the Cobotics project. Uh, Vestalpin in, in its activity, we've seen the, the high versatility in terms of loads, uh, products. Uh, and this feature is something that is really appreciable in terms of, uh, of in cobots, I mean. And uh, yes, maybe we, we will have the occasion to talk about it uh, more in detail at the end, uh, and also uh, uh, a bigger perspective concerning the, the smart factory. So uh, look forward, looking forward to, to the end of the, the webinar to, to discuss that uh, with you. Okay, um, yes, so this was the first testimony um, for the se second part of, of this webinar. And then we will um, we let the floor to uh, Nicolas Pommier from Lise Aerospace, who will give uh, uh, an insight um, on the problematics uh, that Lise encounters, which are pretty much different from, uh, from uh, the Vestapin use case, and, uh, but nonetheless uh, interest, very interesting. <laughs> So yes, Nicolas, we leave the floor to you. Um, no, I think you can share your screen. Uh, so you, I see that your microphone is open. So as soon yep. as, yes, okay. So we see your presentation very well and uh, now the, the floor is yours. Yep. Okay, normally you see my presentation. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Leila. Uh, I'm Nicolas Pommier and I work at uh, Lizzie as uh, an industrialization engineer and a project leader. So Lizzie was split in three uh, company. We have like one branch who work on automotive, one on aerospace and the last one on medical. How application is on the aeronautic parts on more precisely on structural components on the aircraft. So I'm working on the Marmon site. So on the Marmon site, we have got 
we work on aluminium structural components on titanium also we've got also a compressor vein and blades and some little parts like that so uh, this uh, this project uh, the Cabotex project is on the, um, the titanium parts. So the problematics we've got on on that kind of parts, it's we've got uh, a long part. Like um, on this project, we use uh, two uh, two parts. The biggest one is four meter long, and the second one, and the smallest one is two meter. The specificity it's uh, hard to work because it's titanium parts. Uh, work um, up, we obtained it, we we made it with uh, hot forming, so it's quite hard to to work on it. We've got a various uh, thickness versus variation. We move from 1.8 to 3 millimeter. We've got a, a complex geometry on, on this kind of parts. And uh, we use different tools, as we can see on the, on the picture. We've got uh, small and bigger tools. So two small tools are more for the, the big modification of the surface and the uh, defects uh, removing. And the biggest one is more for um, vibration and surface aspect so we are working on a longer operation it's take uh, eight hours for the largest part so it's quite hard for the operator to to work as long uh, this long on the, on the part they risk uh, muscular disorder because to to polish the part they they apply a four kilo efforts so during the eight hours it's really hard to to have a, a good quality on on the part and we've got a, a big abrasive consumption because for the the part with um, a lot of uh, of defects we can use 200 uh, abrasive discs so that's a lot for for just one part so how environment is um, we work with electricity and pneumatics. So the electricity is used for the, the vacuum table. So we use a vacuum table to avoid the uh, sparks and dust from titanium because it's flammable. So there is big risks for the operators and, uh, and the company. <clears throat> and the pneumatics is for the, the tools. Uh, we work with pneumatic tools to to rework the the port so the cobots need to to use this two kind of uh, of energy also and we we've got a, a limitation about the the area around the table because um, we need to move the port easily and it's a, a, a big port so we need to have place to to do that and we need to accept also the the cobot dimensions to work easily with it and uh, as we see the table is shorter than the than the part so to we need to move the part during the the operation so that's also a, a limitation the need of lizzie it's to um, the goal is to work with the the operators um like we don't want to to replace to replace it we really need to work with it. The the goal is to to remove all the the non added value uh, operation, all the cosmetic operation for the to let the operator uh, work on on default and on out access area, which cannot do, be done by the by the cobots. Actually, so we just let the cobot work on plan area and um, and cosmetic uh, aspect, and that can save for us. It's uh, a big uh, one on the on time because it's like 70% uh, of the of the operator time spending on the port. It's on the this kind of 
of operation. And we work with the operation, so they give us a, a very good feedback. They are really interested by the by the project. They see the the improvement. They really want to improve the process. They see uh, the what we can run with this project and to be easy with the with the work uh, operation. So they are very glad to to be to participate to this project. And on on our side, we we can see also uh, acceptance of these parts. We can see on on other parts on or or other departments like on aluminium or parts or other titanium parts. But it's quite difficult to see uh, to see how we can work because. Uh, We've got various uh, various kind of uh, of parts and various geometry. So the possibility of the cobots to to adapt on every geometry and follow the the operator's um, movement to reproduce it, it's really interesting for us to to adapt on different parts and different conditions. So thank you for your attentions. Um, and uh, I will let Leila follow uh, yes. the meeting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Nicola. Um, yes, you talked about it, but uh, yes, in Easy, we you you have a, a a high variety of of shapes and uh, and really uh, the reason yeah. why yes the the, the Easy Boat cobots are interesting for the Keybotics project also comes from the fact that your use case. Um, involves many shapes. Uh, uh, I don't know if you, you can talk about the, uh, the number of references you have to to treat. I but I don't know, and I don't want to say a mistake or. Yes, stuff yes like but uh, there are hundreds, a lot uh, of yeah. yeah hundreds. <laughs> yes, you have a lot of reference shapes, and also there is a high versatility in terms of material. You have titanium, aluminium, so. Yes, uh, we we understand well the reason why the cobots are are interesting uh, for 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 Lizzie. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nicola, and uh, thank you, Tilen, for for these uh, testimonies uh, that are that give us uh, an insight of uh, of the the hopes and the, and the, the use cases for for these cobots. And now um, I will ask the, the, the speakers and the attendees to, to activate uh, their, their webcams uh, because we have a, an open talk. Um, so, yes, um, what I would like now um, is to have an open talk. We've seen uh, the, uh, the case study uh, brought by Philippe uh, at, at the first part of the project. Then we've seen the the, the different strategies in which the cobot can be integrated in uh, in production lines in both uh, the Stalpin and and Lizzie. and uh, which brings uh, me to the to this topic uh, of the smart factories. Uh, it's a trending uh, concept now. We are talking a lot about Industry 4.0, and what I would like is uh, maybe to uh, first to check. What is the, the the trend in the cobot uh, need in the industry, and then go a little bit further in detail about this topic, especially in terms of data collection and uh, analysis, and uh, and also um, ideas of what you uh, what are, what is planned or what you would you would like to deploy in in uh, in your uh, in your shop floors, uh, Tilan and Nicola, about this topic. And to start uh, this, maybe Philippe, uh, you can show um, some um, some slides uh, on it. I will I will uh, give you the the hand. Um, so yes, uh, Philippe, I don't know if your microphone is activated. Yes, you yes. can. Uh, yes, yes. We we can, can we start a little bit uh, this uh, topic on on uh, on smart factories with. Uh, with some insights from uh, from Easyboat Cobots. Yeah, we can. 
Uh, we can speak, uh, speak about the, the market is a market trend of Cobotic. And after that also, we can speak about the functionality uh, that we can develop through the Cobot. That's why yes. Okay, I will put my full screen. Oops, sorry. And this one is better. <laughs> Um, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So concerning the business of robotics uh, and uh, uh, collaborative robot, in fact, collaborative robot is not uh, uh, a simple activities. We have a different kind of cobots. Uh, most of the cobots are the co-working -work, co cobots. Uh, in fact, it's a industrial cobot application without funds to uh, to to make short a long story, and this is probably. Uh, 80% uh, of, uh, of the market. This market uh, exists uh, since uh, 2010, and the size of this market in 2020 was uh, roughly uh, uh, 680 millions of uh, euros. Uh, even if you have the crisis, who stop uh, a little bit the investment of cobalt uh, in the last two years, and um, the average growth for this activity from uh, uh, 2020 to uh, 2025 is uh, roughly 30% uh, to reach uh, a forecast in 2.3 billions of uh, dollars in 2025. It's a real uh, growing market, but uh, the market, the growth of the market is is more uh, focused on the uh, material handling. In fact, uh, uh, packaging, for example, pick and press and so on. And um, in, the, in the horse uh, activities, interactive cobot uh, as uh, EasyBot uh, uh, produce represent only uh, roughly 10 or between 10 and 15 percent of the market. And uh, more and more that we can see also, until now, cobot uh, payload uh, was uh, five kilos. It's the most of the robot is uh, around that. And more and more, you have a growth about. Uh, Cobot with uh, over uh, payload uh, 10, 15, and now we can find some 25 kilos for a material and operation. Yes, uh, that we can say also. That uh, the, the, yeah. We can suppose that the weight increase uh, um, accordingly to the integration of more complex uh, functionalities, I guess. Yes, uh, uh, most of the Cobot builder is focused on the material and operation. Uh, some of them, uh, as EasyBot, uh, try to focus on the uh, process or uh, interactive cobots. But uh, the fact to increase the payload is uh, you can reach a different kind of uh, market. But you have always the restriction of the safety of the workers. More you have a, a big payload, uh, um, more you have to uh, to uh, reduce the speed of the cobot or to to be sure that we are safe. Uh, according to the uh, uh, directive machine uh, reg uh, regulations. So we can see also it's uh, this activity is mainly uh, the, 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 the large uh, region for this activity is Europe. Uh, Europe probably uh, uh, will be the, the, the first uh, region for the Koboti for uh, two reasons, main, two main reasons. First, um, uh, the cost uh, the labor cost is uh, is higher in Europe than in Asia, for example, and the fact to 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 be able to automat automatize a part uh, a part of the manual operation um, is good for the business for the customers. And the second is that the the, the age of the of the workforce is uh, is increasing, and more and more you have some issues to replace people. Typically, Germany, for example, have a have a, a, a lot of problem with uh, the average of age of the workers in the industries. Is that we can say about the, uh, about the activity growth and perspective for uh, robotics in the next five years. Okay. Concerning the, if I manage which my slide. Oops. Okay. Concerning the, the next step for us and uh, probably for, for the rest of the cobotic producers is to, uh, to integrate the industry, industry 4.0 and to have more co communication between the robot and the rest of uh, uh, 
uh, environment in the industry. Uh, the idea is to, uh, to collect information uh, at the source. It's interesting because we speak about manual operation, and very often we have not the same data in manual operations that we can find in automatic uh, pollution flow when we can collect directly information in the PLC or, or different uh, uh, element of the uh, pollution chain. And the fact to, to have some cobalt for the manual operation, uh, we can um, collect easily data for the efficiency of the robot itself, uh, for the maintenance repair needs, as we can find uh, uh, for industrial robot, but also for the process. And um, due to the fact that Isibo is focused on the uh, finishing process, and uh, we speak about uh, consumable like abrasive and so on, uh, the fact to, to have the, some data concerning the, uh, the, con the consumptions uh, and the, the result of using of the abrasive is quite interesting for the customer, for uh, ourselves, but also for the supplier of the abrasive like uh, 3M, for example. Now, more and more, you have, uh, you have some demand to uh, collect information and transfer the information into uh, the MES system or ERP, uh, ERP system of the company in order to have a dashboard about uh, the using of the cobot and to have some decision to um, support with uh, information uh, collected and treat. Yes, exactly. And uh, what uh, what I see, uh, the, the two things that are really clear to me when I see your slide, Philippe, is that we have two aspects. One, the statistical process control. We are starting from uh, a goal, which is to improve the ergonomics, the repeatability of the tasks. And we, we realize that uh, this uh, cobot use can also provide us more, more things, uh, such as uh, data, that can help us to, to optimize, to further optimize the process. I mean, when I see the, the process consumables uh, in Easy and in Vestapin, I guess it's also um, uh, so, something to, to be optimized. And um, yes, if the, if the cobot can also provide this kind of data, uh, it will help also the, uh, what can I say, the, the quality, the quality, um, um, the quality aspect uh, of the task and, and bring a further optimization um, very um, uh, preci precisely speaking we, we can uh, for example extract some uh, duration duration of the task and and maybe analyze this this duration to make a link uh, between the heat and the and the abrasive consumption so i guess yeah. this uh, this new data. I don't know if Nicolas or Tilen, you have some ideas uh, on it. Uh, what kind of example you it brings uh, you into mind? But uh, yes, that's uh, really the first point yeah. I see. And yes, if I come back to the Airbus project, uh, typically uh, you have a, a work area of the robot of 1.5 square meters, and the initial. Uh, uh, life cycle time of the of the consumable uh, abrasive disc uh, it was only one square meters. The fact to uh, to manage the force control uh, on the on the disc, uh, we can manage to uh, to uh, to have the same surfaces for the consumable that uh, the uh, working area of the robots. But this way we increase our fifty percent of the life cycle uh, time of the disk but on top of that uh, you you can have also an analysis of the uh, damage of the disk and probably in the future we can uh, give some information about the, the level of uh, damage of the disk and to uh, to uh, have different actions on the robot as to uh, to call the workers to show the disk or to uh, uh, to increase uh, the, the the capability of the disk by changing the the grid or the the, the structure of the disk, and uh, we have some feedback about uh, supplier like Swim, and they are very interesting to have the this kind of data in order to improve their own products, and probably have a lot of things to do about that. Okay, 
Thank you very much. I don't know, Nicola or Tien, if you have some ideas uh, uh, the, how this data can be useful uh, for your use cases. Um, yeah, definitely. But, if, uh, I may yes. add, if I may add, I agree with all what uh, what has been said. Um, definitely, when you put um, uh, a cobot or nowadays any other machine in in the production uh, floor, you would like to know uh, what's happening with with that machine. Um, uh, and uh, fortunately, today we have uh, tools uh, that allow us to to monitor the the machines um, remotely. Um, and uh, definitely, uh, one one aspect would be then uh, overall uh, equipment effectiveness. Uh, how how what's the OEE? Um, uh, then, uh, if we stick to this abrasives, definitely that would be something that we would also uh, take uh, take a look. Uh, if you imagine. Uh, just uh, how many abrasives we use, for example, one of our companies, or yeah, one of our companies. Then, uh, and if these abrasives uh, abrasives are not utilized, uh, then you're uh, literally throwing throwing away money, you know, uh, buying the abrasives and then uh, changing uh, when the abrasive still has some um, um, uh, basically uh, abrasive material left on the on the on the disc or on the belt. Uh, so this. Yeah, definitely. We, we would uh, gather this this data, and um, in the far in the in the next steps, uh, basically to 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 adjust the the robot um, uh, to to maximize the the, the utilization of of that uh, disk via the force, or maybe uh, different types of grades, or uh, so to to enhance and to 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 um, um, basically to improve the whole process yes yes i, I think it's uh, the, the consumption uh, the abrasive consumption is, is a very good example of uh, of what can be done with this data and on this topic we have a, a question for from the attendees um, which is really open can ai so artificial intelligence be useful for data analysis and optimize different parameters such as consumption efficiency Mm, so uh, maybe AI is um, it's something that is really um, uh, not so far away, but uh, uh, I would say that maybe a, a perspective. Uh, I don't know what you think, uh, uh, Tilen, Nicola, and, and Philippe. Maybe, is it something that is already used in in your in your in your departments? I mean, I'm not an AI expert, uh, uh, to be clear, but uh, definitely um, uh, I would say that in this case, uh, there are different possibilities how to gather this data. Uh, and uh, then you have to do these correlations. If that, then this. Uh, uh, and uh, the AI definitely, I'm pretty sure it, it uh, can help us uh, already and it may help us also in the future to uh, determine if the disk is, I don't know, 80% uh, worn out or 60 or 40, um, maybe using some uh, visual uh, um, uh, visual techniques or maybe other techniques to to capture the to, to capture the data. Uh, so I would definitely agree this this can be very helpful in the future. Because you know, when when the operator let's let's look from that perspective. When the operator is checking for the abrasives, he's looking. And uh, if we apply the same principle in the in the let's say in this automation concept, uh, then we need some sort of a vision and we need some sort of a brain to determine if that is good or bad, or how good is it or how bad is it. Uh, mm. And basically, this I see it in the same principle. And you have this. If we can uh, say it, uh, AI or machine learning, uh, this is already on the market, and um, it, it it can help us definitely. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. And for us also, um, we can with AI we can use uh, for like thickness control or defect uh, detection, and we work uh, on this uh, on this defect with the with the cobot. So yeah. It's a, a big improvement if we can have this. Yes, we 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 talked about defect detection and so on. Maybe you imagine uh, I don't know 
to add, for example, optical measurements, these kind of things, or yeah, to couple them not. with. Yeah, definitely. Oh. I don't know if it's, if it's Philip who wanted to say something. Yes, so that, uh, uh, just before to, to, to speak about EA, just in the case of Airbus, um, and in general, when you have the, the abrasive uh, consumption, uh, you, uh, we remark that uh, when we put some robots, uh, interactive robots, uh, we save uh, roughly 30% of the consumption of part due to the fact that the workers are so uh, painful with the damaged disc and change very quickly the disc. And if you see the dustbin, uh, you will see that the, 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 the damage of the disc is uh, uh, probably only 50% or 70% or uh, of the capacity of working of the disc. This is my first remark. Uh, by putting a uh, cobot uh, uh, for this kind of application, automatically we save some disc because uh, the workers push your uh, force control and increase the force control with the machine that is not allowed with uh, their own arm. This is the, the first thing. And concerning the uh, uh, improving of uh, Airbus, it was more uh, machine learning. Uh, we, uh, we tested uh, the disc with a different scenario of uh, force control and uh, we define the, the best solution in order to increase of 50% the surfaces made. And after that, the cobot have a table inside and when he compare the, the, the duration of, uh, of the existing disk with, uh, with uh, the, the values that we fix uh, uh, practically, and uh, we send uh, an alarm when the, the, the disk arrives at the same surfaces. It's not a EA, but it was the first step in order to save uh, um, to save disk and to uh, improve the using of disk. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much for for this kind of uh, uh, very concrete e example. Mm. So it, it means that automatically by using a cobot, you 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 you, you have a gain that yes. you can further improve with uh, with AI. So. Yes, with AI, yes. probably in the future, uh, not necessarily optical, but it, it could be also some. Uh, uh, we, we are working with uh, electric sending machine uh, tools, and uh, probably uh, with uh, the sensor of the cobalt itself, we can uh, control the the the, the slippage of uh, current consumptions uh, linked to the. Uh, linked to the damage of the disc. And uh, probably we, we are working on, on this way. And uh, by this way, we avoid to have camera, uh, uh, all staff around the, the PCs uh, with the problems that we can find uh, we, in vision system uh, uh, with the industrial robot. But um, we have not developed something uh, until now, but probably the way to, to work on that is uh, it's a good thing to uh, uh, to collect data, and after that, EA uh, will be uh, synthesized uh, the result and the analysis of that. Mm. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Philippe, for, for this very interesting detail. Careful not to say too much, <laughs> as it's something that is uh, still uh, developing, but uh, yes, it's very um, promising to hear this kind of, uh, that these kind of improvements are not only uh, at the state of ideas, but uh, are starting to be uh, implemented, and uh, yes, uh, as I see the the, the time, um, the, the clock uh, ticking. Um, yes, maybe we can conclude with one last question from uh, our attendees. So it, it was one very concrete question about the first uh, study case we had. Uh, can the cobot reach all the surfaces of the aircraft, and do you consider making the robot completely autonomous? Alors, uh, uh, answer the second question first. Note, uh, it's a cobot, it's a collaborative robot, and the fact to use uh, the skill of the workers, uh, you uh, uh, reduce the complexity of the installations. Uh, the idea is to reach uh, the maximum of surfaces in order to uh, let uh, um, to, to give some uh, saving time to the workers uh, to concentrate. Uh, uh, to, to let him to work on the more added value task. Okay. 
to have a cobalt to replace a robot, industrial robot, is not our uh, strategy today. And concerning the surfaces of the aircraft, uh, we started by the most difficult application by the underbody of the aircraft. Probably we can put some robots in, uh, in the countries uh, where the, the workers uh, is, move, is moved uh, on the top of the aircraft in order to help the, the workers to do the, the job for the top of the aircraft. But uh, uh, we have some issues also with the ATEX issue because uh, when we, we have this kind of operation, you have some uh, um, oil uh, in, uh, in the wings of the, of the aircraft and uh, a certain area is not possible to address for sending operation with the cobot due to the VAX is uh, ATEX uh, classification. But uh, probably we put more robots uh, around the aircraft and it's always, uh, always the case for the spare part. Typically uh, for the wings, uh, uh, we, we have planned to put some robots in order to prepare the surfaces. Okay. Uh, no, no, no problem. Um, so yet uh, I have some issues with the with the with the internet. Anyway, as we have uh, um, oh, oh, how to say that um, overlapped the, the the time limit, um, I think we we can conclude this uh, this second webinar, the Kibotics okay. webinar. Um, Yes, uh, I would like to thank uh, Tilan, uh, Nicola, Philippe for your precious and very instructive uh, inputs today. And um, yes, uh, to the attendees, thank you to, to, to have stayed uh, this late. And if you have any questions or you are interested in the Kibotics project, you can, uh, you can contact us and follow us on our LinkedIn, Twitter page. Also, here is my email, so do not hesitate if you want to be put in contact with with any actors of the Kibotic project, do not hesitate. And also thanks to Catherine Bidar, Max Da Silva, Simoes, and uh, Ansel Magshir for, for that precious, precious input uh, for today also. So yes, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And um, yes, I propose to, to conclude this webinar uh, now. Thank you. Thank you very thank you, much. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye